Hi everyone, it's Ila again and welcome to another video tutorial on uh, audio engineering. Uh, beforehand, before we go any fur further, I just want to remind you that I am in <laughs> no way a real audio engineer. I'm just a person who likes to mess around with uh, softwares and you know take uh, f um, scientific, well scientific, uh, ideas and turn them into practical examples. And to do that I'm using a soft software called Reason4 by Propellerhead. Of course uh, to do this you can use pretty much any uh, software or hardware. Um, well uh, this, this time the topic uh, I want to talk about is formant frequencies. And uh, the idea came from uh, s uh, some random conversations and threads I've been reading online, you know, people asking about, for example, Skrillex, you know, how, how he makes the vowel synth and uh, the speaking synth and all that. And I came to think of it like, you know, how, how do you make a synth speak? I'm, I'm not talking about vocoders where you just uh, replace the carrier, um, carrier uh, signal with uh, some other type of signal and include the modulation of uh, human speech. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about real uh, synth and by um, manipulating uh, the frequencies you make the synth, for example, say vowels like A, E, E, as in, as in I'm going to show you in this um, example. Um, so uh, very shortly, the formant frequencies. What are what are they exactly? Well, you can imagine a little uh, set of uh, bandpass filter peaks alongside the frequency spectrum. Let's say you take three bandpass filters and set them in different uh, different places in the entire spectrum, and uh, the carrier wave would be something like a simple audio signal, sine wave, or what I'm going to use is white noise. And you just, um, according to researches and these, I think they're standards, you set the peaks along the entire frequency spectrum and you're supposed to get uh, some kind of vowel sound. So this is what I'm going to do today, I'm going to show you how to do it. Uh, on reason, of course, there are formant, uh, f uh, sorry, formant free uh, filters in reason, but um, instead of using them, I'm going to use uh, bandpass filters. So let me take you uh, to this um, a reason setup I have uh, built up uh, for for this occasion, and I'm going to show you how to do it. All right, so here we go. As you can see, this is uh, my setup. I have two combinators. I'm gonna show you what what's inside the combinators in just a second. But um, I'm gonna I'll talk about the uh, idea of the setup first. Um, the top one is for the vowels a, e, and i, and the lower one is for o, u, and y. And since uh, I picked the frequencies from uh, Google Images, I I found this little table. Uh, it's um, not necessarily uh, correct and accurate. It is very close, and uh, there are, you know, I if you want, you can try to find these um, frequencies by yourself. But um, I, I took the <laughs> short way, and uh, I read them directly from the list. And um, well, let's uh, see inside the uh, combinators. Here, uh, all I have is. Um, mixer for three different outputs uh, the channel one two and three and why I'm using three channel outputs is that right here I have a noise oscillator which pro provides us with white noise I chose white noise just in case to make sure that we have enough uh, frequency bandwidth um, it might necessarily be the best choice, but you can uh, we we can change uh, the oscillator and the our audio type later on. I'm gonna show you how it would affect on the sound itself. Uh, then uh, here I have uh, set 
uh, all the filters, uh, these uh, gray things here are different filters. There are three of them, and usually they are all in series, like, you know, it starts from one, two, and three. But I have rerouted them all to become parallel. So we have uh, the first filter going to the channel one, the second filter going to the channel two, and third filter going to channel three, and they're all bandpass filters, so that's why we need a parallel output. Um, and then in uh, the programmer, I have set the button one to act um, or to change the filters for each uh, task suitable. For example, the button one is for A, and but a uh, button two is for E, and button three is for I. And uh, basically, the same setup is in here as well. Of course, the frequencies vary a little bit, but uh, as you can see. If I press the first button, uh, the frequencies change a little bit. For example, here I have uh, the frequency peak at uh, 738 Hz. Uh, here I have a 1.1 kilohertz, and here I have 2.43 kilohertz. And as I said, these might vary. Uh, you, if, if you're not happy with it, uh, try it yourself with something else. And then, um, okay, so without any buttons pressed, all you hear is kind of like this low uh, white noise <sighs> static in the background. Now, before I bu push any buttons, I'm gonna have to warn you, even though I'm, I added a maximizer trying to control. Uh, the clipping, it might be a little loud, so you might want to turn down the volume just in case. Because I'm not going to do it, yeah, <laughs> you're going to have to do it. So, anyway, let's uh, let's see how the different frequencies would sound like, uh, and you know, what what is the result. So, A, E, E, sorry, I. So that's it. I'm gonna go one more time. Like that. So that's from A to I. And then I'm gonna show you the O and U. I had to skip the Y because I, I, I couldn't find um, the right type of um, frequency combination uh, because you know I, I am finished and I'm I try to find uh, the most suitable for uh, the pronunciation from Finland and uh, I got pretty close but I'm, I'm gonna skip the Y uh, anyway uh, I'm gonna show you the O and U so here we go same as before without any buttons and this O and then we have U And just in case, if you guys didn't really catch it, uh, because uh, it is white noise and it's got a lot of uh, frequency spectrum, I'm gonna try with a multi oscillator. I'm gonna use um, a saw wave, and this um, gives uh, just a little bit harmonic, so it it may be a little bit more um, understandable. So this is all without any anything pressed. Then we go to A. Let's try again. A. E. So hopefully you guys um, got that. This is the very basic setup for vowel sounds in uh, formant frequencies. So uh, if you guys are, uh, if you guys feel like it, try it out. Uh, let me know what you think. And of course, uh, I. As I said, I am not an audio engineer. These are just something that I wanted to try out cold. And if you guys have any ideas how to improve this um, uh, this tutorial, or if I did something wrong, or if if you just disagree, agree, I 
I would like love to have any kind of um, feedback from you guys. All right, so that was it. I hope you guys enjoyed it, and I am waiting for your feedback over this subject. Um, I am going to put a link to uh, to the table I was using, uh, but in case you can't find it, just uh, try typing uh, format frequencies on a search engine, and you should be good to go. Uh, you should be all right. And there was another thing I was supposed to mention. Oh yeah. Um, the Thor that I was using in my example also in, uh, has a formant uh, filter in it, so you should uh, try to check it out. It, I'm actually not quite sure how it works, but if I remember correctly, I did find uh, some kind of table online for um, you know that resembled uh, the b box uh, thing that uh, the filter type has on Thor so check it out I I didn't test it myself but uh, if if you guys feel like it uh, look into it and see if there are any um, any similarities between uh, the table and the filter type um, I I think that's pretty much about it so I hope to see you guys uh, soon enough I'm gonna try to uh, think uh, some something else to uh, to go uh, go forward from here so have a great day and I'll see you guys later bye